of that. Won't come off. Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Today I'm going to be talking with you about how you can 3D print articulating movable 3D printed objects in resin. Now typically that's something that you only would do on an FDM 3D printer like the Elgu Neptune 2S. But with a little bit of trial and error, you can get some amazing results with these 3D prints and resin. But first, let me tell you about today's video sponsor, which is none other than Elgu. I'll be using the Elgu Mars 2 Pro and the Elgu Saturn in today's video, and it just so happens that I partnered up with Elgu and doing a big giveaway here on the channel that's ending later this month. We're giving away five $50 coupons that you can use over on Elgu Shop, where you can basically apply that to anything on Elgu's Amazon Shop. We're also giving away an Elgu Mars 2 Pro. This is such an amazing initial entry-level resin 3D printer, printing D&D &D figures, just cool prints, articulating prints here that we'll be talking about in today's video, and finally, one lucky person will win an Elgu Saturn. This is such a kick rear-end mid-size resin 3D printer that I highly recommend picking up regardless if you win or not in this competition. I'll also be using the Elgu Mercury X bundle in today's video that you can find links down below to all of the products that I'm showing off and mentioning in today's video. I want to say a big thank you to Elgu again for sponsoring today's video. So today we'll really be focusing on Magai Beer's articulating dragon file that you can find over on Colts 3D or My Mini Factory. It prints amazing and you don't need supports for this or to hollow it or anything Thing like that it just prints as is on your build plate you're just gonna need to scale it up or down depending on how large or small you're gonna to want to print it and as I mentioned normally you see people printing these things on FDM 3d printers and that's typically what they're designed for however I've been able to get a whole bunch of different articulating files to be able to print over on resin 3d printers over the past handful of months and it's a really wild experience Initially, back in July, I printed these articulating slugs, and they're not flexible, so it's not like it's flexible resin. They just have articulating pivot points in all of these different designs, and then they typically print flat on a build plate. Again, no supports needed, and they're gonna print in place, and then when you pull them off of the build plate, you're gonna be able to see them moving in action, which is really cool. But the problem comes in when you don't have your settings quite dialed in as best you can, to print these successfully. So I've gone off and 3D printed Beer's Dragon at 55% scale on the Elgu Mars 2 Pro. And as we're looking at it, you can see that a few areas of the Dragon didn't properly print. And that typically comes down to a few different factors that I try to pay close attention to or further test out when working with these articulating prints. And those are typically gonna be the bottom exposure the exposure settings, as well as the temperature of the room that you're printing in. Now, I can't say exactly what I think is the issue with printing this particular dragon, but I believe it's my bottom exposure settings needs to be bumped up at maybe one point there. The exposure settings, I think, are gonna be okay. I'll get this off the build plate and we'll actually see if the, the tail moves at all, and hopefully it does. But that other factor that I mentioned is one that I think maybe not a lot of folks are aware of, is the temperature of the room that you're printing in. It's getting cold here in New York, and so my print room is hovering around 68 to 70, 72 degrees, which is typically fine. However, if I need to, I might turn on a space heater for about 20 minutes while I'm working in the room just to help bump up the overall temperature of the print space. Now, depending on your exposure and bottom exposure settings, the bottom exposure is gonna help your print stick to the build plate. But if it's too exposed, the parts are gonna fuse together. The same thing goes with your exposure settings. If you're overexposed, it's gonna fuse the pieces together. Like in this case here, I printed one of these dragons off on the Saturn and I had the exposure settings wrong and the leg fused to the actual body part. How the files were actually 3D modeled and designed are gonna play a big factor in this as well in terms of how well the pieces are gonna articulate along with also how you're gonna scale them. The smaller you make these files, the more difficult it's going to be. If you decide to make them larger, like extremely large, you're probably gonna end up needing supports on some areas of the prints. I've had lots of success printing these slugs on the Mars 2 Pro, and I think it was scaled down to 80% scale or 70% scale, but anything lower than that, I was getting fused body parts. And printing them on the Saturn, in theory, should be a good bit easier in terms of the parts fusing together, assuming, again, that you have those settings dialed in. Funny enough, I think some of these articulating prints might be the best torture tests for your resin 3D printers to see if you actually have your settings 
properly dialed in, not just an exposure settings test. Another fun challenge is just getting the prints off of the build plate and not breaking them. Be able to get your spatula under there is half of the, half of the challenge. Oh my goodness. There we go. Broke off a small little piece there. I might adjust my bottom exposure settings. There we go. Oh, okay, that's it was just the head. Everything else is popping more or less. Look at that. Won't come off. And then there's the tail. So here's our damaged dragon off the Mars 2 Pro. As you you know, the tail is obviously gonna break off there. Everything else is looking great, is articulating properly. The arms or the legs here are able to freely move without any issues, so that's good. My initial exposure settings I'm thinking are looking good. I just need to adjust the bottom exposure settings. Maybe it had to be the temperature. It was a little cooler in here this morning when I went to start this print. And I just broke off the bottom <laughs> back piece of the tail. Another thing to consider with these are, depending on how small you print them, they are going to be fairly fragile until you get them cured. Uh, the tail is moving along here. The back, since it lifted off, is fused together a bit. So we'll see. I'm going to get this reprinted, and we'll see if we can get it fully moving around. All right, and finished printing, and it looks much better than the original did. Everything looks like it printed properly. Uh, everything. Oh, I've got one tiny little spot that probably could have uh, been just ever so slightly better. But overall, it's like 99% perfect. So let's try and get it off anyways and we'll see what it looks like. All right, hopefully I can get this off without breaking it as well. Always a little tricky on the smaller ones. One thing that you could do if you were nervous about breaking it here, you could put this in a Ziploc bag and freeze it in your freezer for like a half an hour to an hour and it should pop off. I might actually attempt that here. Oh my goodness, it's uh, the head is just on there. You can just sort of gently poke at it to get the the pieces off. Oh no, I broke the tail. <laughs> All right, again, I've got the, the hands are moving freely here. The tail, everything except for the very back part of the tail. I mean, it's kind of fused together there. The the tail part is easily the trickiest, trickiest part of this print to get correct, especially at this smaller 50% scale here. Now there are a few ways that you can actually cheat at this or just make it easier on yourself. And one of those is here, just printing it larger obviously is gonna make it a lot easier when it comes to those parts not fusing together, but getting it off the bill plate is also, as you've seen, pretty tricky. So if you print directly on one of the flex plates here and here, I'm using the wham bam flex plate, you can just simply flex the print and it's going to slide right off. When these come off the build plate and are still all slimy and resin soaked, it's, it's so fun to play with. I wish there was a way to keep them wet to touch, but not wet and not you know harmful for you to play with. Another option is to just support the file. So when you go to add the supports in Chitu or Lychee, you only want to do it from the build plate up. You don't want to do the entire print. I always use auto supports, so it's just going to auto support it using the small or mid-sized supports, and it works great. It's another alternative way for you to print these. Again, it's a little bit of extra resin that you're going to be using, and you're not printing it in place. You are supporting it. However, once you get the supports off, it's going to be just as flexible as if it was printed directly on the build plate. So once you've got your files printed and they're articulating, we're only halfway there. We still need to clean and cure our prints. That's where something like the Elgu Mercury X bundle comes in very useful because we need to properly, and I mean really properly clean these resin 3D prints. I'm using isopropyl alcohol here. Uh, again, you could try to, if you didn't have one of these, using just a standard bucket filled with IPA and swishing it around you might not get the best results of getting it thoroughly cleaned out. So having something like this does a great job of making sure that the prints are really clean. I like to let my prints run for about three minutes in the wash station, and then I try, if possible, to make sure that I'm using as clean as I can IPA, not one that's been 
thoroughly used over and over and over. I want these really clean so that when we go to cure them, nothing sticks together. Cleaning, I'm gonna set these out on a paper towel and let them dry out. I want these to again be as dried out as best we can before starting the curing process. You can also use, if you have, you know, a hair dryer or a heat gun to help expedite the, the, the drying process there. Also an air gun of some sorts or an air canister can help get some of that liquid that's still in there out and uh, get these as dry as quick as we can. Now that we've cleaned and let our prints dry, it's time to get them cured under some UV light. And what I like to do is put the dragons on here or any of the, the articulating prints on your plate here that you're gonna be curing with. And what we're gonna do is let these cure for about 30 second intervals. And then we're gonna continually move them around. What we don't want happening is any of the joints bonding together during the curing process. So it's been a handful of hours since we talked a second ago and I've run off and printed a ton more of these dragons in gray resin on the Elgu Saturn. And then I also went off and re-attempted the dragon here on the Mars 2 Pro, this time using one of those flex plates. Yes, I know I'm cheating ever so slightly and it turned out perfect. Now for my favorite part, let's get it off of the flex plate. This one printed flawlessly. Every single one of the joints are articulating and flexible. Even the far end tail pieces here are fully articulating. This turned out perfect. If you end up resin 3D printing some of these articulating dragons, let me know in the comments below what's the lowest scale you're able to reliably print them at. About 50% is about as far as I can go typically with these without all of the pieces fusing together. This again is a great way to test out your resin 3D printing settings to make sure that you have them as closely dialed in as possible. At some point here in the very near future, I'm gonna be attempting to make my own articulating 3D prints and I'll be making sure to share them with you all here as well as over on my Patreon. And with that said, a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support and the projects that I make here on the channel. I've got some fun stuff going on in the background that I am working on ramping up towards a much larger video that will probably be occurring at some point here in early January. If you're interested in resin or FDM 3D printing, one of these articulating dragons by Magai Beer, I'll have links down below to his Cults 3D in my mini factory page, or you can pick up the files for yourself. And again, a huge thank you to Elgu for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested in more information about the giveaway, I'll have links down below to that, as well as the products from Elgu that I've used in today's video. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. This is a little bit of a longer one, but hopefully it was a bit informative on how I go about resin 3D printing these articulating prints. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.